good evening to one and all on behalf of the management i would like to congratulate the departments of commerce and management for organizing a national webinar on coping with the covid-19 i wish all the best for all the participants and i congratulate once again the departments of commerce and management for organizing such a seminar good afternoon i from st philomena's college welcome all the participants for this national level webinar on coping up with covid-19 from the perspective of commerce teachers this covid-19 a small virus microscopic in nature has been a magnificent teacher for human kind it taught us how to cope up with life in times of difficulty with less money with less facilities under lockdown many things changed so as our conferences and seminars today it is the day of webinars online webinars the department of commerce of st philomena's autonomous college mysore has taken a bold step of conducting this national webinar on a very pertinent theme that is coping with covid-19 and that too from a point of view of professional excellence as teachers the department started in 1969 and from that time has been rendering human service in this field i congratulate the department the teachers involved and i wish the participants will have a very fruitful interaction a very good session during this webinar a two days webinar on this theme thank you wish you all the very best a very warm welcome to all who have willingly registered to participate in the two day national level webinar on coping with covid-19 teaching and learning for professional excellence opportunities and challenges which is scheduled on 5th and 6th june 2020 as we all know under the present situation exchanging ideas thoughts and knowledge to a large number of participants is more ideal through webinars our college management has encouraged us to host such sessions and we are glad that we could have very eminent speakers who would speak on different themes i take this opportunity to congratulate all who are part of this webinar and wish you all a very fruitful and meaningful session thank you and over to dr sunil disosa we have with us mr yonel disosa he is a founder of ms ms y disosa and associates mangalore he is a investment service pro professional and trainer in personal investment management he has corporate experience with jp morgan chase bangalore from 2009 to 12 and inter in interned at colasso and arana an investment services firm based in mangalore he is also a guest faculty for investment courses at various education institutions mr disosa has masters in business administration in finance and bank marketing from st aloysius institute of Man management and information technology i am happy to have you with us sir uh, with us sir uh, i uh, i hope uh, we are we got almost uh, 59 participants logged in uh, Uh, shall we begin or shall we wait for a few seconds because we have almost uh, 100 participants who are registered okay uh, i am comfortable and we can we can shall we start yes yes sir we'll go okay. to 
Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Sunil Desoza, for uh, the introduction. I'm uh, happy uh, to be here. Uh, I'm looking forward for a very good session. So, before I begin, I would just like to test my uh, presentation slides. Is it visible? Is it visible? Yes, yes, it's visible, sir. You can move, move forward. Okay. 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 Uh, a very good evening to all the participants present here. Uh, this pandemic, COVID-19, has brought a drastic change in our lives. Uh, they have it. It has a lot of downsides, but there are a few benefits which have uh, come out of this. And one of the benefit is, uh, especially, uh, there were like quite a few reluctant technology users, and they have embraced technology like never before. Especially the senior crowd, and trust me, they have got into this technology to this extent that they can give uh, the millennials a run for their money. Especially, like, let's say for a seminar like this uh, and for these education sessions, earlier we were bound by geographies. Uh, not anymore. Though we had an online option earlier as well, we never really used it much. But thanks, I wouldn't really like to thank COVID-19, but every, every cloud has a silver lining. So I welcome all the participants for this session on a few ideas on investments in the context of this pandemic. And I would like to thank St. Philomena's College for having organized this session. <sighs> I've got 60 minutes of time with y'all. And the session is on personal investments, and that's pretty vast. So what I am in a dilemma, whether I talk about the forest, talking about the forest is giving you a big picture, giving you the holistic idea of what exactly personal investments is, or whether, whether I need to talk about the trees, whether I get into details. So this is a dilemma I am in. But let me tell you, I'm going to try and pull out the stunt that I'm going to talk about the forest as well as I will get into the details and trees here and there so that you have an overall idea plus you have a basic or a, uh, you also know the nitty gritties of what exactly we need to do when it comes to investments. So what can you expect from these 60 minutes? The first thing in the context of the pandemic, we have uncertainty that is looming around. How do we address it? So I would also like to introduce to another invisible monster. No, it's not COVID-19. There is another invisible monster in place. I will introduce you as we progress in this course. A tip and trick to understand one's current reality. What is the ultimate objective of investing? Uh, okay, the next point is we have like too many investment options and it's not possible to cover all investment options. But there is, if you understand a few fundamentals, you would be able to figure out uh, any investment option for that matter, you would be able to understand the nature of it and how exactly uh, that investment option would work. And how should I invest my savings? So ultimately, that's why we are here for, we have an income, we have expenses, we are left with savings. So how do I need to go about my savings and investments? Where should I invest? So this would be a match the following kind. And the way forward, like after the session, if you are interested to gather more knowledge or want to read more, I would recommend a few things wherein you can, you can proceed with it. So predominantly, the objective of this session is to give you all a few ideas wherein you can develop at a later stage on these. So I'm going to use this theme of uh, Albert Einstein. He says, if I had an R, to solve a problem, I would spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem and five minutes thinking about the solutions. So I can give you, I can tell you the kind of investment avenues that we need to invest in, but that wouldn't serve the purpose because going forward a few months down the line, few years down the line, when things change, uh, whatever I recommended a few days back would change as well. So the objective here is I'm going to set up a contest, context in such a way that any information you 
receive in future, you will be able to uh, put it in that basket and uh, it, you can uh, keep enhancing your knowledge. Uncertainty. This is a kind of buzzword. Okay, today uh, our lives have been uncertain in the past as well, but the degree of uncertainty post COVID-19 has shot up. It has shot up drastically. Uh, we have no idea. Now we are in June. We have no idea what July or August will look like. So as humans, we do not like uncertainty. Okay, uh, we, we really get worried. So no wonder the astrologers have capitalized on one of our weaknesses of human beings. And, uh, what they try to do is they try to create that certainty. But here today, I can remember oh, my investment teacher, he used to always keep saying a thing. There are two things in life, things you can control and things you cannot control. What we have to focus on is the things that we can control. And let's draw our attention uh, to the a few very, we have little control in life and let's draw our attention to those things. There may be uncertainty, but whatever little control we have, let's try to exercise that control. Uh, let me give you a reassurance. Okay, uh, this we, we have this uncertainty, but there is a beautiful quote by Warren Buffett. He says, in the 20th century, the United States had endured two world wars. There were other traumatic and expensive military conflicts. There was a Great Depression. This lasted for around 10 to 12 years. There were a dozen or so recessions and financial panics. There was an oil shock back in the 1970s. There was also a flu epidemic back in uh, almost 100 years back. And also, there was a resignation of a disgraced president. Yet, the Dow rose from 66 to 11,497. Here, what Warren Buffett is trying to tell us is, back in the 20th century, United States had these dramatic events. But in spite of that, the US economy could overcome all these things and it improved drastically. Now, what is Dow? Nothing but it is a representation of the US economy. There is some disturbance. Yes, one minute, sir. I request to Vinay Archer. Mr. Vinay Archer, kindly mute your audio. Mr. Vinay Archer. Oh, this is uh, the US stock market, the performance of the US stock market. And uh, we can take that though the data, we have a 200 year data. Let me consider from 1900, we had a diversified index. So if you observe, in spite of these major events, the US stock market keeps going up in the long run. And this was the Great Depression, though it looks very tiny. Here, the stock market fell by 89%, but in spite of that, in spite of that, this looks very small when you compare the long run, but in spite of all these fluctuations, the stock market keeps going on, going up in the long term, but to, it's not only the stock market, stock market is the representation of the economy, so the, even the economy has overcome these uh, gigantic events which have taken place in the past. Uh, coming to the Indian stock market, this is the representation of the Indian stock market. Again, the Indian stock market is a representation of the economy. So we have the data from 1979. We have the data from 1979 to 2020. And if you observe for the past 40 years, we have had events like there were for three continuous, uh, continuous years back in the mid 1980s, we had a drought. We had the Harshad Mehta scam in 1992. In 2000s, we had three things, 9-11, Ketan Parak scam, and the technology bubble. And then we had a bull run for like from 2003 to 2007 for uh, four years. The markets had gone up by almost seven times. But then we had the global financial crisis. The markets tanked by 60%. And then this is the V-shaped recovery, which uh, people keep talking about, we had a quick recovery back in 2008, wherein, see, if you see, this is the V-shaped recovery, we, we managed to come up again. 
And recently, this is the impact of coronavirus. The stock markets fell by 30% in like 40 days. Now it's coming up. It's here. So I don't really know whether we are going to have a V-shaped recovery. I don't really know whether we'll have a U-shaped recovery. I don't really know whether we'll have a W-shaped recovery. But if you look at this, or if you look at the US stock market or any other stock market, you will realize that over a long, longer period of time, if you see the graph, it keeps going up over the long term. So this is a message that I would like to communicate. Though we may have these events like COVID or a pandemic, I'm sure we will be able to overcome this very soon in future. Now, some of you all would have watched this beautiful movie, Par. So this boy is in the hostel and he's asked to explain a poem. And he says, जो दिखता है वो होता नहीं जो होता है वो दिखता नहीं what he meant to say was what you can see it may not be the truth and what is a truth you may not be able to see now this is it's very much applicable to investments when it comes to investments there is a lot of noise there is a lot of information, but what it matters to us is like a tiny spot. It is this small. So if you go away from the screen, maybe you maintain social distancing with this screen. What you realize is you would be able to see only the noise and information. You wouldn't be able to see what really matters to you. Jo dikta hai, wo hota nahi. Jo hota hai, wo dikta nahi. So there is like too much of noise. I'm not going to focus on anything of that sort. I'm going to focus on something that real matters to each and every one of us. There is, uh, I wanted to play a video, but due to the paucity of time, what I suggest is I've taken pictures of, pictures of it. And I've put the screenshots here, but I will take you all through uh, what exactly happens in that three minute video. There is this little boy. He wants to buy this telescope. Okay, he dreams of being an astronaut in future. So he wants to badly buy that telescope. And when he looks at the price, the price is 2,500 and he doesn't have the money. So what he does is, whatever little money he has, he saves it. Every little single penny he sacrifices, sacrifices, he uh, sacrifices and saves everything what he has. And finally, there comes a day where he's not able to put more coins into the piggy bank. So he realizes that he has made the money and he takes this money and he runs to the shop to buy the telescope. He finally reaches the shop and he's so happy that his dream is going to come true. And see the joy in his eyes. He's going to buy the telescope, right? The cost is 2500 He feels that he's going to achieve his dream of being an astronaut. But unfortunately, the price has increased to 3500 A little boy is not able to buy the telescope. See the expression in his eyes. See the expressions here. He felt that he's going to buy it. But here he realizes that he's not able to achieve that dream. Okay, now let me introduce you to a character. I'm sure everyone has come across this character. We name him Uncle Sam. Okay, everyone in your life, you would have come across this uncle. Let me just tell you this. This is a true story, but I don't want, I don't really want to get into the details. Back in 1990, this Uncle Sam, he was aged 50. He was in the Gulf and he worked for quite a few years and he had this sum of 20 lakhs which he came back to India with. And 20 lakhs back in 1990 was a huge sum. In today's terms, 20 lakhs would be almost 2 crore rupees. This is 1990. So the point that I'm trying to make is our man had 20 lakhs. So the interest that he was receiving was about 8%. 8% is, to, let's say, uh, no, I've taken 10%, I've taken it as 10%, but uh, it's around, let's say, 16,000 per month he was receiving. Let's say his annual expenditure is also 2 lakhs. So his 
expenses is meeting with the interest that he's receiving on the deposits in the year 2000 our man would have become 60 the value of his fixed deposits would be 20 lakhs the interest that he would receive is the same but the expenditure have taken an increase of expenditure of about 4% per year his expenses would have increased to 2.96 lakhs in 2010 our man would have been 70 years old the value of his fixed deposits would remain the same 20 lakhs the interest would be the same 2 lakhs but his expenses would have increased to 4.38 in the year 2020 our uncle would have been 8 years the fixed deposits would have been 20 lakhs interest 2 lakhs no i don't see these calculations because here he would have returned his capital dr william bernstein says probably the most relevant definition of the risk is likelihood of running out of money charles ellis says risk is not having the money when you need it the most so here we have covid 19 so all of us are covid warriors we are fighting against it and i think deep from my heart i think that we will overcome this monster but there is another monster whom i would like to like you all to meet that is inflation he's invisible he keeps uh, eating up our money we just don't realize over a period of time we lose the value of our money our purchasing power is reduced i'm sure we would have all had grandparents who said who would have said back in those days the cost of rice would be 2 rupees per kg but today it's around 40 rupees per kg inflation has beaten our grandparents hands down we shouldn't let inflation beat us so this is the inflation monster that we need to think about we may find a vaccine for covid but there is already a vaccine for inflation okay else what's going to happen is it's going to be too late before we realize that inflation has taken a toll on us what can be worse than uncertainty? See, when it comes to uncertainty, I know there is also a hope that things can be better. But what can be worse than uncertainty is the outcome is negative and it is certain. And we can do nothing about it. We have no control. So that can be worse than uncertainty. And what inflation does to us is over a period of time, it erodes the value of our money and we realize it a little too late so this uh, let me tell you that this course is not a course on how to get rich quick because there may be courses on how to get rich quick but they never tell you that they have dual specializations along with get rich quick there is a possibility of how to get poor but there is no way but what i'm going to focus on is what are the key areas that we can do in order to uh, uh, build our wealth over a longer period of time this little boy out there, you can consider him to be, let's say, he has these savings. He has these savings. What we have to do is we have to invest it carefully. Like every person, even a person who just starts work, he may have little savings. But over a period of time, if he invests it in the right place, wherein the soil is fertile, there would be a day wherein his, the money that he had invested takes care of him. This state is called financial freedom. A state wherein you do not really have to work for money. You do not have to work for money because money is working for you. This is a meme. This is what really happens on our payday and the rest of the month. This is on a lighter note. This is normally our plan. Okay, This is our plan. We think that things are going to go very smooth. But unfortunately, this is the reality. So I come from an investment school wherein uh, we do very less number crunching. We do not get into projections, but what we do is we try to understand what our current reality is all about. So let me just do a quick exercise. You can do this exercise at home, but it is very important before you think, before you get serious about investments. So this is a basic exercise. Try to calculate your income. Let's say 60,000. Your expenses are, let's say, 25,000. Out of this income, see how much you are paying your past. You're paying your past in the sense, how much are you servicing debt? 
how much what is the value of your emis how much are you paying your present how much are you spending on your current lifestyle that is paying your present and how much are you going to pay for your future that means what or how much what is the amount that you are investing for the future and you need to put percentages for it and this is an exercise where you can do it once every year but it is going to be extremely powerful so how much are you paying your this is an excellent scenario if you are if you do not really have loans uh, let's say you do not have any loans you would tend to be paying your past even if you spend 50% on your present and if you are able to save 50% for the future it is a excellent scenario but let's say you have a loan of around 25 uh, your your emi is amount to almost 25% that's okay uh 50% you're paying your present and 25% you're paying your future you can consider your situation to be satisfactory and whereas when it comes to paying your home loans your emi do not really put it in the past because your home is an investment what you can consider is you can whatever emi you're paying there you can include it for the future because after the end of the loan you would be left with an asset wherein you can live in so when it comes to home loan you may not really have to put it that you uh, that when it comes to, uh, to servicing debt but you can always uh, write it as your investments for the future now there are now there are too many investments things really get complicated you have commodities equity cash bonds interest stock real estate things get confusing so there is a very simple way to understand you need to understand something called as asset classes and if you understand this this you, can, you would be able to categorize any investment in one of these asset classes now there are four asset classes now let me tell you about what debt is let's say you go to a bank okay you deposit money in a bank you are depositing money there so ultimately uh, you are a lender to the bank so the banker will pay you interest no matter whether they earn profits or whether they make losses you would get your principal and interest so when it comes to debt your examples for debt are debt instruments are your bank of these or something called as debt mutual funds your recurring deposits all these things come under a categorization of debt what is the nature of debt when it comes to short term debt it is safe and liquid relatively when it comes to short term debt your investments are safe and your investments are liquid so in most cases you would be able to have an access to your funds and if it's a debt instrument and it's a short term paper your investment value does not really fluctuate in the sense it does not go up and down uh, down like the stock market when it comes to equity here you are a lender here you are a owner you are a owner so when it comes to equity you are a owner so if you invest in a company if they make losses you also make losses it can impact on your share price if they make profit it can reflect in your share price good examples of equity is you can consider equity shares or equity mutual funds when it comes to real estate real estate is a good investment avenue but the problem with real estate is you require large funds there is a huge huge funds required to invest in real estate but one good advice for a common investor is you can invest in real estate only to the extent you have a use for it uh, for example if at all you are a person uh, let's say you need only a house you can invest only in a house which which is sufficient for you let's say you are a doctor it's always advisable that you own your office premises or your clinic and your home premises so to the extent that you have a use you can invest in real estate but it's not really popular in india but in the united states they have something called as reits real estate investment trust until we have a proper reits in india i suggest not to invest it uh, invest in it but once we have it once we have a proper ones like how we have equity mutual fund similarly if we have 
uh, in the uh, mutual funds that invest in real estate like the proper ones then possibly we can consider investing in real estate as well and finally it's gold now there are two things when it comes to gold one is for personal consumption another one is for investments now when it comes to gold investing in a uh, gold there are you can invest in three ways one is the sovereign gold bond you do not really have to hold physical gold you can invest in a sovereign gold bond which is backed by the government of india or you have something called as gold mutual funds sovereign gold bonds are when it comes to your uh, uh, it it has a return on investment so around 2.75 is taxable interest but you get that interest but whereas in gold mutual funds you do not really get it but one advantage of a gold mutual fund is uh, you can average it over a period of time so sovereign gold bonds are not available always only when announced by uh, the government of india so we are clear about this there are four asset classes debt equity real estate and gold now let me give you an idea of what is equity just think over look into your living room look look into your living room and see do you consume do you consume uh, like do you have an ac do we all use an ac most of us use what about electrical appliances what about a car we all use we all consume these goods and services what about the battery of it? it's manufactured by amar raja and excel the tires are manufactured by jk tire apollo tire mrf the shirts are manufactured by arvind lifestyle you have raymond a jewelry is titan tanish pc jewelers when it comes to shopping shop is top trend we mart future retail our shoes are manufactured by relaxo bata uh, are stationary we call pedi light manufactured by pedi light you have camlin when it comes to our hair oil it's manufactured by bajaj hul bajaj uh, consumer care hul marico the noodles are manufactured the maggi noodles are manufactured by nestle itc and paints are manufactured by asian paints burger paints nerolac so if you look into your living room you consume so many goods and services so my question to you is it's not only about you. it's not only about you there are almost 130 crore indians who consume the goods and services of these companies and there are so many people who work day and night uh, uh and you have the best you have the best minds in the world you have the best min minds in the world who manage this company let's say you own shares of reliance industry who is working for you you have mukesh ambani who is working for you day and night who is putting in his mind into the business so this is about equity but my one question to you is you consume the goods and services of these companies but do you own these companies another question to you is with with 500 rupees per month is it possible for you to invest in top 50 companies uh are listed on the national stock exchange by market capitalization you can think over it i'll get back to you later but with 500 rupees a month can i get exposed to all the top 50 companies uh, in the national stock exchange uh, listed uh, on the national stock exchange okay now gold versus mutual fund rexy 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 one second okay hold on yeah like uh could you please uh, could you please put it on mute there is some disturbance ye pa ka lag le wano gal ma dekha le pa ya pole na miss jovita please mute your audio okay so let me let me continue let me continue this so we have on 3rd april 1979 Sensex points were one twenty-four. On fourth of yeah, on fourth of June, twenty twenty, the market closing yesterday closed at thirty-three thousand nine eighty. So if you look at the CAGR, it's around fourteen point five nine percent. Whereas gold, back in nineteen seventy-nine, the price of ten grams gold was nine thirty-seven. Twenty twenty. 
uh, uh, yesterday, the price of gold was 46,580. So if you look at the return on gold, it's around 10%. Now you may look at this and you may see, listen, the difference between, okay, but remember, this is the return in spite of the effect of coronavirus. But, and when it comes to the return of gold, this is after the impact in the sense recently gold has shot up. In spite of that, you see over the long term, equity does really well. But whereas gold, gold has done well, but not as much as equity. Now you may say no, but still I would like to go with gold. The difference is only four percentage points. But what I would like to do is I would like to take the help of uh, Einstein, Albert Einstein, because you remember what Albert Einstein said. The eighth wonder of the world is compound interest. So let me just tell you about it. Let's say back in 1979, you had invested 10,000 rupees in equity. The CAGR. When I say equity, you are investing in a diversified uh, index which consists of diversified across various companies which represent the entire economy. So the CAGR was 14.59. When it comes to gold in 1979, let's say you had invested 10,000 rupees. The CAGR would be 10%. So your 10,000 would have increased to 5 lakhs at the rate of considering a CAGR of 10%. But whereas your investments in equity, your 10,000 at the rate of 14.59% CAGR would have increased to 26 lakhs. The point that I'm trying to make is do not underestimate even a single percentage point in the long run. It can have a major impact. That's the reason why we have an Albert Einstein who said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. I have the data, this is from 1981 to 2011. So the reason why I'm showing you this data is over a longer period of time, the performance of inflation is 8.3 in the sense, uh, the uh, cost of goods increased at the rate of 8.3, gold at the rate of 8.79, bank fifties gave you a return of around 9.17, but equity gave you a return of 16.75. Going forward, as the inflation will reduce, I'm sure the return on equity too will reduce, but you can always consider that return on equity more or less, uh, you can expect it to be a slightly more than your bank fixed deposit. Now, this is what, when we say that equity has given you a return of 14.59 or let's say 16% over the long run, or going forward, we may get a return of 11%. This is what we expect. We expect every year to get 11%. This is what we expect, but unfortunately, when equity gives you these returns, equity does not deliver returns in that way. In the first year, it can be negative. The second year, it can give you 11%. Third year, it can give you zero. Fourth year, it can get 22. Fifth year, it can be minus 13. Sixth year, two. But on an average, equity can give you a return which is slightly more than your bank fixed deposits. So that's the reason we call it as compounded annual growth rate and that's uh, over the long term you get a return of around a few percentage points more than your bank fixed deposits so some of you all would would tell me listen Yonel, i do not like fluctuations i'm not willing to uh, uh, see my money fluctuate so if you ask me is there a way to invest in equity without going through these fluctuations the answer is yes it's possible. So if you ask me this question, is there a way to invest in equity without taking the risk to capital? Yes. So I will quickly, I wouldn't get into the details, but here what my emphasis is to just to tell you that there is a possibility like this to invest without really taking a risk to capital. You can, let's say you have five lakhs. You can park it in something called as a liquid fund, a liquid mutual fund. From here, you can register Capital appreciation transfer. What do you mean by capital appreciation transfer? Is any appreciations from this go into an equity fund? Generally, liquid funds are safe. The capital does not fluctuate. So your five lakhs will remain intact. Only the appreciation portion will go into equity. So you are taking a risk to capital. But over the long term, your equity investments 
grow faster than your debt instruments. But here, what you're doing is without taking any risk, you are investing in equity. So we have covered all the four asset classes, debt. Examples for debt are fixed deposits and recurring deposits or debt mutual funds. When it comes to equity, equity mutual funds or equity shares, real estate, what I've advised is invest in real estate only to the extent you have a use for it. And gold, my suggestion when it comes to gold, invest in, or forget about jewelry, I do not really want to intervene in that matter because it's your personal choice. But when it comes to gold as an investment, I suggest that you do not have uh, an allocation more than 10% of your portfolio because over the long term, gold does not really beat inflation. So the objective of having gold in your portfolio is because it is less correlated with equity. So when equity zigs, you have gold that zags. So these zig and zag, so it doesn't really correlate, but it is advisable not to have more than 10% of your portfolio in gold. And when you're investing in gold, the two best ways to invest in gold is not physical gold because you'll have a carriage cost. You can consider investing in sovereign gold bond or gold mutual funds, or you also have an option of gold ETFs. Now, let me give you let me give you six ideas or plan of action the first thing six ideas just six ideas the first thing is your emergency fund each and every person should have an emergency fund back uh, before bc okay before coronavirus no it's not before christ but before coronavirus So uh, when it comes to, uh, let's say I've got six ideas, plan of action. So you may tell me I have an income, I have certain expenses, but I have, but I'm left with savings. What do I do with my savings? The first thing is, there are these three investment categories you can have. The first is emergency fund. When it comes to an emergency fund, it's always advisable. You have 12 months of your expenses. You have 12 months of your expenses set aside for emergencies. Let's say you have a salary of around 60,000. Your expenses are 30,000 per month. It's advisable you have almost 360,000 in your emergency fund. Now, where do you invest your emergency fund? The best place to invest your emergency fund is in a liquid mutual fund in a liquid mutual fund, or you can also invest in bank fixed deposits, but there is a problem of taxation. Even without withdrawing, you get taxed on your interest. If you are in the higher tax bracket, it's always advisable to have your uh, emergency fund set aside in a liquid mutual fund. So always remember 12% of your expenses are set aside for emergencies. Coming to the second thing, I'm, I'm, I hope you all are clear with when it comes to your emergency fund. When it comes to your retirement fund, when should you start investing for retirement? The best time to start investing for retirement is as soon as you start work. So if we have delayed, if we have not invested for retirement, uh, let's say, uh, when, as soon as we started work, then we, are, we have delayed. And the reason why I'm saying this is because if you close your eyes, if you think from zero to 30 years, that's the time wherein we learn and our income is minimal uh, during our early years of working. From 30 to 60 is a time of productive life. But once we retire, our life can be really too long. I hope you remember the example of Uncle Sam, uh, wherein he had to go through a time wherein the value of his money was eroded. So in order to avoid that, we need to start saving for retirement as early as possible. So how much should we save for retirement? Only 10% of your income. So if your income is 60,000, it's advisable you start saving 6,000 towards the retirement fund. And where should you invest your retirement fund? You can invest in something called as equity mutual fund. You can invest in these equity mutual funds, you have something called as index funds. So here you are being a owner 
uh, in these investments. So over the long term, equity has the potential to beat inflation. So over a period of, let's say, 20, 30 years, you would uh, beat inflation and you would have generated wealth, which would be sufficient to take care of your time during retirement. And the third investment is your general investment fund. Now, when it comes to a general investment fund, this fund is for emergencies. This fund is for retirement and general investment fund is for all your expenses other than your uh, emergencies and retirement. So anything, let's say purchase of a car, if you want to down payment on a house or children's education, children's marriages or vehicle purchase, all these things can come under general investment fund. If you have any requirements that are going to come in the next two to three years, then it's advisable to invest in something called as debt, debt or liquid funds, because liquid funds are safe and do not have a link to the stock market. But if you do not have requirements, let's say uh, for five years, then it is advisable to invest in, have a mix of both debt and equity, 50% in debt, 50% in equity or you can also do this allocation 50 percent in debt or 40 percent in debt 40 percent in equity domestic equity 10 percent in international equity you have sitting in india you have mutual funds that invest in the u.s stock market and also 10 percent probably you can go invest towards Google. and once in a year or if there are drastic changes in the market what you can do is you can rebalance it so when you are rebalancing you are taking money from an asset class that has done well and you are investing in an asset class that is not doing so well so over a period of time that is the best way to go about investment investing and rebalancing your investment so always always you can come back to the original allocation of 40 40 10 and 10. so when it comes to your emergency fund invest in debt instruments because it is safe and liquid for your retirement fund, invest in equity because it helps you to make money in the long run. And uh, when it comes to your general investment fund, have an allocation between debt, equity, international equity, and gold. So you are diversified across asset classes. So we done with three ideas. The fourth idea is, the fourth important idea is, you have financial dependence. So if you are a father, and if your wife and your kids are dependent on you, then you need life insurance. If you do not have financial dependence, if you are a bachelor and you have no financial dependence, then you do not need life insurance. Let's say you have financial dependence. Financial dependence is someone who is depending on your income. Let's say you have financial dependence and uh, what is the cover you need to take? The a thumb, good thumb rule is Let's say your income is 5 lakhs per year into 15. So it's always good to have a life insurance cover of rupees 75 lakhs. And what is the type of policy that you should invest in? You should invest in, sorry, not invest. What is the type of policy you should you go for? You should go for only one type of policy that is called as term life cover. Nobody really sells these policies because there is no real incentives to the person who sells, but you have to look out for it. For a 30 year old, for a 30 year old, a cover of 75 lakhs may cost around 10,000 rupees per year. If something happens, the family will get 75 lakhs. If nothing happens, he wouldn't get this 10,000 back. And this is 10,000 per year. Second is health insurance. In spite of your company covering you for health, have your own health insurance cover. No matter what, have your own cover. Maybe you can start off with a policy of around 5 lakhs sum insured or 10 lakhs. And whenever you go for insurance, whenever you go for insurance, always take quotations. Because there is one company that can offer you a higher premium and another company for a lower premium, but the features can be one and the same. So it's always in important to take quotations and when it comes to your savings ratio savings ratio is nothing but your savings divided by income it's always advisable if your savings ratio is 40 percent if it's less than 40 percent then it is important that you gradually uh, get yourself to start saving 40 percent a month because in times like COVID, we realize the importance of having savings. So it's very important to start saving at least 40% income every month. 
I have a caution to tell you. How much ever I tell investors, people keep forgetting this. So there is a very good way to go about. There are three things in life which you shouldn't mix: drinking and driving, because the consequences can be bad. So you should never mix drinking and driving. The second thing that you should not mix is tomato ketchup and ice cream. You know the consequence of it if in case we mix. And the third most important thing that you shouldn't mix is investment plus insurance. Most of the products which are sold are a combination of investment and insurance. And if you go for these products, the insurance cover can be very small. It can be inadequate. The insurance cover can be inadequate. Whereas the investment, at the uh, and let's say after fifteen or twenty years, also will be like peanuts. The reason is because it is very high on cost. It is poor when it comes to liquidity, and when it comes to flexibility, it is not that great. So always remember, keep your investments and insurance separate. For risk cover, take insurance to generate wealth. Invest. So we have covered the asset classes. There are four asset classes: debt, equity, real estate, and gold. When it comes to six ideas of investments, we have discussed. emergency fund retirement fund general investment fund life insurance health insurance and uh, uh, you have your savings ratio so have, we have discussed all of these things now let me tell you what exactly is a mutual fund because a lot of people misunderstand a mutual fund This is on in a lighter way. Now, what exactly is a mutual fund? A mutual fund is a common pool of money to which investors contribute for investment in accordance to a stated object. Now, some of you are wonder, what did I really say? but let me simplify what exactly is a mutual fund here we have investors just like you and me to invest in debt instruments we want to invest in equity instruments or we want to mix our investments a mix of equity and debt so there is a mutual fund company what is a mutual fund company what does it do like a bank what does a bank do bank borrows and lends money whereas a mutual fund is an asset management company the role of a mutual fund is to manage money and your money is not held by the mutual fund company the money is held by somebody called as trustees most of the trustees are not a part of the mutual fund company and ultimately you have a regulator you have the securities exchange board of india that regulates the mutual fund operations Okay, so back in those days, back in those days when I was ten years old, there was uh, I was watching a marathon race. This was in our city itself. So I was in, close to the finish line. Both me and my dad were uh, we were we were watching, and what I realized was there were this the the f- first person comes. he wins the gold then you have the second person silver bronze but in spite of that a lot of people were running in spite of there being already three winners and they were uh, they wanted to reach the finish line and i asked my dad why why they didn't stop running my dad said their objective is to complete the race because when it comes to a marathon it's not easy even if a person completes the race it is an achievement when it comes to investing investment is not a 100 meter sprint investments is a marathon so we have a jason's way who says in the end what matters is crossing the finish line it's not about crossing the finish line before anybody else but making sure you cross the line it doesn't really uh, it doesn't mean that uh, we have to uh, have the best investments all the entire objective is that you have investments across debt equity and you can have a combination of uh, debt and equity also have a little investments in gold 
and you diversify across asset classes when you are investing uh, investing in equity you can diversify and one of the best ways to diversify when it comes to an equity investment is through investing in equity mutual funds and one of the very good equity mutual funds is investing in index funds wherein your cost is extremely low so before i conclude before i conclude let's say i was given uh, this is one of the most important piece of advice let's say i was given only 60 seconds to talk to you all imagine only 60 seconds the first thing i would do is put my hands in the air and i, I would say that uh, i cannot really say anything in 60 seconds but then if i was asked to speak for 60 seconds at a point blank range i would think for the first 10 seconds and then for the next 50 seconds i would give you an advice and this is the only advice i would give if i had 60 seconds so when it comes to your job money or when it comes to your investments what is important is the plan the plan is of utmost important products are your mutual funds shares then you have gold your bank fds bank fds rds senior citizen savings scheme all these things form a part of the product now when you take financial advice when you take financial advice if the financial advisor is talking about products if he is talking only about the products then he is not thinking in your interest but if the investor is actually if the advisor is genuinely interested in your goals they are genuinely interested like in your goals in your income in your expenses how much you are able to save if they are focusing on the plan instead of the product then they are talking in your interest but if they are talking only about the product and not focusing about the plan then the advisors are may be talking in their interest so this is one piece of advice that i want to share so whenever you interact with financial advisors this is a key area to judge as to how exactly you need to go about so to be successful at investing you need to have the information you need to have the knowledge you need to have the insights and wisdom or another option is to take professional advice if you want to get some good information i i suggest you visit this website franklin templeton investments and there are these small videos new to investing new to mutual funds and more about mutual funds you can watch these videos it gives you this this very good idea about investments a very good book on personal finances let's talk money by monica halan it's around 200 250 pages it's written by a financial journalist she's a financial journalist and it gives you a overall idea as to how exactly you need to go about about your investments but if you want insights you want to have uh wisdom then i suggest you to read these books i i will share them if you want my presentation slides i will share them with you but these are the books if you want wisdom on investments then these are the books you have to read so uh i'm done with my session i would like to thank uh, uh the organizers you can you can reach out for the questions but first or first and foremost i would like to thank the organizers uh st philomena's college for organizing organizing this session and if you have any doubts queries you can you can always uh, drop an email uh, to this and if you want this presentation slide you can contact with the organizers or you can uh, drop in an email and i will share the presentation slide and finally i would like to end with a quote this is by paul samuelson who is the nobel laureate he says investing should be more like watching paint dry or watching grass grow if you want excitement take 800 dollars and go to las vegas so investments should be like watching paint dry or watching grass grow and you have george soros who made a similar comment he says if you are having fun when it comes to investments if investments is entertaining then probably you are not making any money good investing is boring Uh, i'm done with my session so if you all have any questions uh, uh please uh, let me know yes uh, mr yonil thank you for your uh, uh, excellent session on investment and uh, opportunities during these pandemic situations
okay there are few questions i will just uh, uh, share those questions which is asked by uh, participants okay shall i go through sure sure okay there is one question that is uh, can you give few tips for identifying the sustainability of a market for the company it is uh, yeah okay okay uh, so what i suggest is when it comes to if i if i have understood this question this way when it comes to investing in, in companies when it comes to investing in companies i suggest that it's in, we're better to invest in diversified companies so the best way to get instant diversification is through a mutual fund uh, it may be worth it it may not be really worth it because you've been working for like 8 hour 8 to 10 hours so it's not advisable to pick stocks that's my opinion the best way that you can go about investing is by investing in diversified equity mutual fund you'll save a lot of time and over a period you will make money which is higher than your bank fixed deposits and i would like to mention about uh, one of my friends who is a businessman he is a businessman who takes a lot of risks when it comes to business and i like this investment philosophy you know what he told me one day uh, you all listen i take a lot of risk in my business but i don't want to take that risk in my investments i like my investments i'm investing in equity i'm investing in equity mutual funds but i like my investments to be passive what paul samuelson advises watching like pain dry or watching grass grow so his investment life is passive and his business or professional life is active i hope i have answered that question okay uh, okay sir next question is there it is about sir if you if i have 1 lakh amount in hand where i can invest my money which investment is suitable in this present situation okay it is by radhika see, yeah. yes. radhika okay okay radhika see what i can tell you is it's better you first have a financial plan see there are two things you can invest it's first it's advisable to have an emergency fund okay you have an emergency fund should be you should have your money in liquid funds because it is not advisable to time the market we do not really know what july is going to be like we do not really know what uh, august is going to look like so it's advisable money which you need for the short term money which you need for the short term should be placed in liquid funds short term i mean like let's say 4 years or less money which you need for the long term which you need for the long term should you can invest in equity long term i mean 10 years or more and when you are investing in equity there is a very good way to invest in equity keep your money in your liquid fund okay and you can make slow transfers to equity you are not timing the market you are not timing the market but wherein your funds are going into equity so even if there are fluctuation in the stock market you are not really able to see that impact if you want investments if you if your objective is beyond 10 years okay equity but if your horizon is 5 years or more you can split it equally between let's say 40% in debt or liquid funds 40% in equity and uh, 10% in international equity and 10% in gold and when it comes to gold sovereign gold bonds or gold mutual funds okay there is the next question is there from manoj louis yes yes can i go through yes uh, lot yes yes sure sure a lot of cautions investors invested in the six debt funds of franklin mm-hmm. templeton for liquidity purpose but the company withdraw mm-hmm. these schemes now they will have to wait for around 1.2 to 2 years to get back their okay. investment amount does this action instill confidence in the investors to invest though mr sanjay sapre did give reason for withdrawal of schemes but what about the investors okay i completely understand the situation of what the investors have gone through especially the investors of franklin templeton mutual fund but let me reiterate this point that there are the six debt funds and on the six debt funds my focus is on investing in liquid or short term mutual funds it's unfortunate to know that franklin templeton uh, closed one of its ultra short bond funds uh, it's really unfortunate to know that but i would like to consider this as an exception because we had a fund manager who what what they did was they really uh, didn't adhere to the rules they should have and they shouldn't have had papers there but the next thing that we can protect ourselves is by diversification 
by uh, by diversification it can really help now when it comes to franklin templeton mutual fund especially the funds that we recommend ultra short bond fund would have been in that category we can be assured that the investors have not lost the money we have to wait for some time and they have closed the fund in the best interest of investors because there were redemption pressures i agree this is an exception but there were redemption pressures but in spite of that we have taken this action in the best interest of the investors and we are hoping that they are able to recover the money and pay back the investors but one thing good about it is the money is lent out it's not lost so uh, what you can expect is and it's very transparent we know where exactly the uh, mutual fund has, has invested and i'm sure i'm confident that we would have at least especially uh the funds that are in the shorter duration the investor should receive the funds as early as possible okay. i i hope i have answered your question yes okay sir uh regarding that again no questions i uh, there are more questions regarding real estate okay so okay. Real, estate, okay. real estate is getting restarted by how many months that is by uh, dr subhashini yeah okay uh, i may need cl clarification on that question real estate uh that is re real estate whether it is going to start and when that is one question okay and it is getting re it is getting restarted yeah restarted yeah. that is what real estate is getting restarted by how many months yeah okay uh, so i'm not really i would uh, yeah, i would request to have a better understanding on the question so that i can answer it appropriately uh, if we have uh, mr uh, yeah doctor who, who, the question by so, sir, no hello sir what i was thinking that uh, during the beginning of the covid i thought real estate will get stashed up but immediately after two months i can see i can foresee that there would be again encouraging trend real estate companies are getting restated so but uh, st even then there is a doubt that by, by how many months it will get restated to the original state of condition okay uh, did you get my question uh, sir uh, re restated in the yes, sense uh, restated. restated yeah restated in the sense uh, they are asking madam you know, going back to the normal situation as it was earlier before yes, covid yes yes okay, yes okay. back to See, the original uh, back to the original you know, if you if you look at the data if you look at the data especially in uh, especially in when it comes to india from 2003 to 2012 we had a real estate boom prices shot yeah. up almost by 10% but from 2012 to 2020 we have seen a slowdown especially in the metros yeah. there is a lot of inventory that is in place so always remember when it comes to real estate real estate happens on an average the cycle of real estate is 10 years so we have seen around 8 years of 8 years of a kind of a slow down from the peak we never really know because uh, average real estate cycle is 10 years so it's an average so it can go much more beyond and covid covid has taken a toll on uh, the economy first of all we had a slow down in the economy and the migrants going back not coming back so we do not really know there is complete uncertainty there so i i hope things can come back to normal but until there certainty we, we we wouldn't be able to predict and if you are predicting it is nothing but speculation yes yeah sure 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 okay sir there is one more okay thank you can i ask the next question sir yes yeah okay okay so there is one more question uh, by mayesh can you give me the few examples of equity and liquid mutual funds okay uh, yeah this is a very good question so when it comes to a mutual fund when it comes to a liquid mutual fund uh, so i i suggest what you do is it it wouldn't be right for me here uh, in this forum to give the names of the mutual funds but let me give you can do this homework what you can do is maybe you can go for the top 6 or 7 amcs again these are just thumb rules i'm not giving definite advice and every fund one good thing what the sebi has done is every fund has a liquid fund every fund has a liquid fund so i will give the names of few mcs not that i'm recommending these mcs but uh, just to identify it's going to be easy franklin templeton mutual fund is one of the examples you have icici prudential mutual fund you have hdfc uh, hdfc a mutual fund not hdfc life hdfc asset management company 
you have DSP mutual fund, LNT mutual fund. Every mutual fund will have a liquid fund. Every mutual fund will have an equity fund. And there are many equity funds. So when it comes to equity fund, what I suggest is go for index funds. Every fund will have an index fund investing in Nifty 50 or Nifty Next 50. So uh, you, you have a liquid fund. And one good thing is you will find a liquid fund across all AMCs. So you can select, do your basic analysis. Maybe you can uh, do your basic analysis. If you need help, approach a financial advisor. I hope you've got an idea. But uh, if you research, uh, a very good website is Value Research Online. You can visit that website and try to do your analysis and compare liquid funds. You should be able to do. And for equity, I suggest go for index funds. Index funds are passive. There is no active fund manager that is involved, and your costs are extremely low. Okay, so there is next question. That is why the companies are not coming up as a forest grower. Why the companies are not coming up as forest go growers. See, Yonel, you mentioned about trees and forest in the beginning. Yeah. Slowly yeah, grow. Yeah, yeah. So why not forest yes. grower? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I, I don't really know. Uh, maybe uh, uh, I will have no, to. We speak a lot about we speak a lot about growing the forest, the environment, uh, maintaining the environment. So definitely, it is a cost cutting cost cutting attempt too. So in spite okay. of that, though. There is a profitability. Why the comp companies are not taking up this venture? No, I, I will have to reach out. Possibly we can have a forum wherein we can uh, reach out to the capitalists and then have a discussion as to why exactly they are uh, not coming up with it. I do not really have an opinion on that. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, there is one more question from Praveen, sir. It is, uh, we are not professional investors, so how can we make safe, profitable and simple investment? We are not okay. even aware of investing uh, investing procedures also, but we are interested to invest. Okay, We're very good, very good. So what I suggest is, what I suggest that the first thing that you can do is, uh, you can go to this, we'll have to put in some effort. See, you can get the information, you can get the knowledge, you can get the insights or wisdom, or you can take professional advice. The best shortcut is to take professional advice, but again, I gave you a tip and trick as to how to identify good financial advices. So this is the way to go about it. But if you want information, I suggest if you want to do it all by yourself, first, you should watch these videos. It will give you a basic understanding. Buy this book, read it. Okay. And then for wisdom and insights, you can reach out here. But I, you have to do some homework. Or if you take professional advice, the advisor will be able to help you out. And as I said, I will repeat it. This is one of the good strategies to test the advisor. Yes. The next question is about, uh, explain once uh, Paul Samuelson's definition, please. That is a request from uh, okay. Shepard. Yes. Yeah, uh, that, that's a beautiful uh, quote by Paul Samuelson. What? Uh, wait. What Paul Samuelson says is investing should be like watching paint dry. So when it comes to watching paint dry or watching grass grow, it takes a lot of time for grass to grow. So if you're watching it, you have to do nothing, but you have to just watch. It's one of the most boring exercises ever. So when it comes to your investments, especially when you're investing in equity, equity investments, it can give you negative returns, it can give you positive returns. Sometimes there will not be any growth, there will not be any growth. But in spite of that, we need to have the patience. I will just take you through this. Uh, see this. Just check this out. Uh, no, wait. I hope this is clear. This is clear. Yes, yes. Is this clear? You can see there have been times, there have been times from 1995 to, to almost for seven years, there was no growth. There was no growth at all. So there have been times where in equity, if you look at the past 10 years also, I, there have been times you wouldn't have got growth. But over a period of time, let's say 20 years, I'm sure you would make enormous amounts of money and that example that I gave you here about this 
over the long term over the long term we would have had made money but this making this 10000 to 26 lakhs it looks very good very good but the journey is not that easy there have been times where an equity wouldn't have given you that return and there are very few people who stay the course there are very few people who stay the course and that's why paul samuel sun says that when it comes to investing it should be like watching grass grow or watching paint dry uh, paint dry but if you want excitement if you want entertainment then go and speculate okay maybe you can go to las vegas speculate but when it comes to your investments let your investments be passive let your investments be passive and let's not take any uh, drastic decisions out there yes sir sandeep sir that okay any, any other questions yeah there are a few more questions sir one is uh, about i smell there would be a com- complete realignment in the structure of banks and insurance companies but i am not able mm-hmm. to guess the profit opportunity and loss involved any such guess work okay uh, no uh, i wouldn't really get into guess work because it's not worth it again uh, it comes under the domain of speculation because it's may not be really worth it it may work in my favor it may not really work in my favor so i do not really would like to put an effort there and identify because uh, let me just give you an idea this is me okay what are the resources i have what are the resources i have what are the skills that i have versus versus a company or let's say domestic institutional investors what about foreign institutional investors the point that i'm trying to make is we are individuals you have companies that put in a lot of efforts they make quick money out of it because they have the resources to do it it may not be really worth a time to put in our head into such things because it may not really benefit us because we are going to fight against uh, or the players in the market are these domestic institutional investors who have the mutual fund insurance companies so it may not really be worth it to look at such opportunities wherein we can profit so my whole idea about investments is my investment life is going to be Uh, passive and my professional life is i'm into financial advisory i have to understand the goals of my investors understand their requirements and possibly suggest a few investment avenues that can help them make optimum returns for the long term okay sir one more question sir uh, regarding regarding hello sir yes. hello yes madam yes hello, sir yes madam regarding regarding this answer say i may be such an investor who, who is always feel very safe that my amount of deposits always in the bank only either in the bank or any such a insur- uh, life insurance company so now if i get a fear that you will say a day may come that the even the government may borrow lot of funds from the banks so that the even the banks bank deposit uh, uh, base itself may get extinct so regarding okay. that what is your opinion okay a very good question i completely understand we recently have that uh, frdi bill but that didn't go through and uh, we would have a, a newer version that is fsdr which may may come sometime in future and in these cases there will be a bail in clause as you rightly mentioned we are scared what will happen to our deposits but let me mention this thing to you you have something called as sifi systematically important financial institutions and only three banks come into that category you have the sbi you have the icici and you have hdfc these are systematically important financial institutions that means they have accepted to get into that regulation so i don't say that these banks are extremely safe but what i'm trying to say is that there is a lot of regulations in these institutions so there is much more focus on these institutions not that we should have all our deposits here and the next best thing to protect ourselves is diversification even even when it comes to we have to diversify our investments across banks because we do not really know what's going to happen okay and uh, we cannot sit and keep analyzing uh, uh, the just uh, the balance sheets or uh, where they are lending out their money we do not really know so the best thing that can do is one solution is SIFI, you can have certain investments in systematically important financial institutions. The next best thing that you can do is uh, diversify across banks, and also you can consider mutual funds because mutual funds are extremely transparent. Okay, sir. thank you, thank you. Yes, sir. No problem. Yes, uh, sir. There is one more question. Among the investment portfolio, which yields highest return with lower risk in the current scenario? 
Uh, which, okay. Uh, well, come again with the question. Yeah, I'll, I'll answer that. Yeah, come. Could you please come again with the question? Yes. Among the investment portfolio, which yields mm -hmm. highest return in the lower risk? With a lower risk in the current oh. scenario. Okay, okay. Uh, a very good question. Risk and reward are always, uh, let's say, higher the risk, higher the return. But let me mention, I, I will give you an overall idea because standing here today, uh, we. Our life itself is uncertain. So our economy, we do not really know what's going to happen to the economy. But let me just mention to you over the long run, over the long run, let me give you an idea about one second. Yeah, let me give you an idea about debt. Debt instruments, this is nothing but your FDs. So currently the rate is around five to six percent. The equity over the long term can give you long term, over the long term, okay, can give you a return of around let's say nine to ten percent. Because looking at the past, equity has given you a return. Equity beats inflation over the long term. If you do not want to take risk, and which I completely agree, I suggest you put your money in a liquid fund. Put your money in a liquid fund. Let's say you put 5 lakhs here, example. And from here, you transfer it to equity funds. Okay, if you do not need the money for the longer term, if you do not need the money for the longer term, this is the best advice I can give you. Put in 5 lakhs here, over a period of, let's say, if you want, you can make 1% transfer. 1% transfer is 5,000 rupees every month. Over a, a period of 10 years, the money gets transferred, but you are not taking any risk to capital or very, very low risk to capital. That's what my advice is because we do not really know what the short-term short -term outlook is. The markets can crash. Okay, the markets have gone up. I don't really know what can happen in the short term. The markets can go down. So, and it can stay down there for a very long term. So it's advisable to go about this way. Uh, I remember Warren Buffett's rules. The first rule is never lose money. The second rule is never forget the first rule. Yes. Yes. I can't hear you. Sunil, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, it's clear. Which sector would you suggest for investment as of now? That is one question. That is the last question I am going to ask. Okay, okay. Uh, yes, one second. Uh, we have only three three minutes and uh, this present link will get over. So, mm -hmm. oh. uh. one second. My uh, good idea. See again, when we if we pick sectors that we are going to, it is nothing but speculation. So a good idea about investment is that about diversification. For example, investing in the Nifty Fifty, and investing in all sectors. You have automobile, you have cement, you have consumer goods, you have energy, you have financial services. This is the best way to go about investments. If we pick sectors, it's nothing but speculation. That that specific thing may not really work in the long term so what i suggest is if you are investing in the nifty 50 index you are diversified across like so many sectors there can be one one sector that can do well there can be another sector that doesn't do well but overall we expect in the long run as an economy that we can improve so i'm not really picking sectors sector specific but rather diversify across sectors